Hey, this is Math 6, Unit 1, Lesson 14, called Nets and Surface Area. All right, again, surface area is the amount of area it takes to cover the surface of something. We start off looking at post-it notes early on there and how much many post-it notes would take to cover a um, cabinet. And a net is something that would cover that same area, but then you unfold it to see what it would look like. So we start off here with some examples of some nets and then trying to match the nets to the shapes that they belong to. Okay, So the thing about a net is when you look at the nets, they're going to have the same parts, the same polygons that make up these um, polyhedron over here. So look at uh, this one here. We have a square and we have four triangles. Well, these are the ones with triangles, but which one has a square base? Well, that one has a square base there. This has a triangular base. So we would say that 3 goes with A. So we can put an A right here next to 3. That works there. This one we have uh, rectangles with squares there. So we have a, uh, a prism shape. And again, this one has a square. And it has the four rectangles. So it would be B. For C, we have a triangular base. And the triangles fold up. So that looks like number 4. C. And here we have three rectangles and two triangles for a triangular prism. So that matches this one right here, the triangles and those shapes fold up. And then all the squares together form a nice cube. So we have E right there. Again, just something to start to visually see how those look. If you have larger ones of these, if your teachers provided them, it's really good to be able to see how you could fold those up tape them together to make these three-dimensional shapes, the polyhedron that are right here. This next activity, it said your teacher will give you the, the nets of three polyhedra to cut out and assemble. Right, so she, there, he or she's going to give you some larger um, nets that then you can cut out and you can fold to make the polyhedra we're going to talk about there. All right, so hopefully you do that. So if you haven't done it yet, push pause, cut them out, put them together, and then press play and let's see what you got. So we're going to name the polyhedra that they would form. This first one we can see that we have a lot of rectangular shapes there and we're going to fold that up to have a small little box basically and we would call that a rectangular prism is what that's going to be there. On the next one because it has a square base and it has these triangles it is going to be a pyramid, and we would refer to that as a square pyramid. The square is referring to the kind of base that it has. All right. And the last one here, it just it's set up a little funny, but it does work out pretty just fine. This one, because it has a triangular sides here, and there's two of them, and we have these rectangular shapes here, this would actually come together to make a triangular prism. Alright, so those are the three shapes that you're going to have. Now the next question on the next page wants us to find the surface area of each polyhedron and explain your reasoning clearly. So to do that I'm going to come back to this side over here and let's take a look at what we have to figure out the surface area. Surface area is going to be all the places that are blue. That's essentially what we're going to do because everything that you see when it folds up becomes part of the surface area of the polyhedron. So on the first one, we know we have these little strips which are like length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I know I have the sides of a length of 5 and another 5. Here, these parts are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So a 6 and a 6. This larger rectangle is a 6 by 5, which makes it 30. Right? And this one is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 5, so it's also 30. So we have a 30 and a 30. When I add up all those areas, that will give me the surface area of A. So I have 10 plus 12 is 22. So we have 6 plus 2 is 8. So this has a surface area of 82. On the next one, we have the square, first of all, which has an area of 4 by 4, which is 16. 
And then I have this triangle, which is one half of the base, which is four, times the height, which comes down right there, which is one, two, three, four. And what else? These are all the same. So I can actually do this and multiply it by four because it's the same triangle four times. So one half the base times the height times four triangles. So half of four is two. Two times four is eight. And eight times four is 32 altogether. So I'll take the 32 tri for the triangles, add it to the 16 of the square, and I end up with a surface area of 48 square units. And this last one here, we have a rectangle shape, which is a three by five. So three times five is 15. Here we have a three by three, which is nine. Here we have a three by four, which is 12. And this triangular shape, I could copy it over here to, to by moving that over there. And I have a three by four, which is also 12. So when I add these up, 15, 9, 12, and 12, we end up with 9 plus 9 is 18, and 1, 2, 3, 4 for 48 square units. So those become the surface area for each of those three shapes, which is answering really the question on the next page, number 3. All right. Now you may or may not have done the next part, which is are you ready for more? Um, so just real quickly, it says for each of these nests, decide if it can be assembled into a rectangular prism. So there's a little bit of visual, spatial visual awareness here of whether it would work or not. So to make that rectangular prism, we're going to need to have, generally speaking, we're going to need to have at least four rectangular pieces, right? And then we're going to have to have some sort of top and a bottom, okay? So here we have one, two, three, four rectangles and only one top. So no bottom, this would not work, okay? Over here we have one, two, three, uh, four, doesn't really quite work, and a rectangular top, just not gonna work out, we're short a piece, not gonna happen, okay? Here we have one, two, three, and then we have the rectangles there, but I'm short a rectangle, I need one more for that to work, so not gonna work. Here, you'd fold up, fold up, fold up, and then put the lid on top, and we're gonna be okay, so C would work great. Number two on Ready for More is a little bit harder to see, perhaps. We're looking for a triangular prism. A triangular prism will be made up of a top and a bottom, which are triangles, followed by, because there's three sides here, three rectangles. So we can see that it has three rectangles, two triangles, three rectangles, two triangles, three rectangles, two triangles, rectangles, two triangles. So that means they all have the right number of shapes. The question is that they fold up and work together. If I fold this rectangle up, I definitely have a flap here to make one of the bases, but what about this side over here? It's not going to work, right? I can't get that one to flip all the way over, so I'm going to be short of the side over there. I have an empty hole. not going to work out. For B, B, if I fold it and I fold it again, how am I going to get a shape to come off of this side, right? I don't see how that's going to work there. I'm not going to be able to get that to close up. It's just, just not going to come together nicely. So B is not going to work. C is a little bit trickier. It looks like maybe it wouldn't work, but actually C would work. It would be kind of fun. If you have these with you, if your teacher has them, try to make that one. This is a fun one to make just because how it folds over. You end up folding it and then putting a lid on it with this one. So C is going to work just fine. And D is the much more straightforward one, right? We fold those up to make um, the prism part and we put our caps on it, our bases, right there by folding them together. D would work as well. So D is the easier one to see. Uh, C is more the fun one to do, okay? So quickly in summary, we would say that a net of, of a pyramid has one polygon at is, uh, sorry, a net of a pyramid has one polygon that is the base. The rest of the polygons are triangles. A pentagonal pyramid is an, and its net are shown here. So when you're looking at a net of a pyramid, you have a polygon, it's a base, and then you have the rest is triangles, right? So that's a pyramid shape there. A net of a prism has two copies, 
of a polygon, that's the base, and the rest is rectangles. So we have the base and the rest are rectangles. In a rectangular prism, there are three pairs of parallel and identical rectangles. Any pair of these identical rectangles can be the base. So any one can be the base, it really doesn't matter, they're all identical. Whether you want to go top and bottom, or sides, or front and back, they're identical, so they all work out as bases without a problem. Okay? And so, for instance, the net of a rectangular prism shows three pairs of rectangles. We have four units by two, we have three by two, and we also have four by three. And by adding all those rectangles up, we can come up with a surface area, which is 52 square units, because when you add them up, you get 52. All right, we're going to pause there, and you're going to do your homework, and then we'll come back and we'll check it together. All right, check in your homework for Math 6, Unit 1, Lesson 14, Nets and Service Area. Can the following net be assembled into a cube? Explain how you know and label the parts of the net with letters and numbers if it helps you explain. Okay, so can this work? Well, if we fold this up, what we're going to see is that I can fold this into the, um, you know, the outside parts. Right, that's going to fold together to make that little shape there. Easy enough. And I could fold the bottom down. That could be a nice bottom there, no problem. But this piece, once I fold it up, fold it up to make a bottom, that piece there has no place to really go. And so you'd end up then with an open top there if you fold that together. So can we make a cube? We would say no. We couldn't make a cube because there's not going to be a top. If we put this piece somewhere like here, then it would work because then when you fold this up you'd be able to close the lid there and close the lid there and you'd be in good shape. Number two, what polyhedron can be assembled from this net? Well we have triangles and rectangles and we have three rectangle pieces that would match the three triangle sides so you would call that a triangular prism, right? And now what's the surface area of that? Well, to find surface area, to find the area of each piece. So here's a one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five. So four times five is 20. Here's a one, two, three by five, which is 15. And here's a one, two, three, four, five by five, which is 25. And then we have these triangles which match, so I can move them down there and do one of these fancy reconstruction things and I have a 3 by 4 for 12. Now I add those areas up, a 25, a 15, a 20, and a 12. And we end up with 12 there and 3, 6, 7 for an area of 72 square units. Number 3 here are, at least on the next page, here are two nets. May said that both nets can be assembled into the same triangular prism. Same triangular prism. Do you agree? Show your reasoning. So she says that we could take both of these and make two triangular prisms. All right, so if that's the case here, let's take a look. Um, first of all, I see two triangles, two triangles, that's good, and I see three rectangles, three rectangles, that's good there. So the question really is, if you fold these, will it work, right? And we can see uh, if you fold that up, we have a bottom there, and the tops would just wrap around, and we'd be okay, that looks like it'd be good. On this one, we would fold it up, and because these are on opposite sides, this would cover up this side, this would cover up this side, and that would work as well. So hard for me to show you here without doing it. It might be something that you might want to kind of cut out and practice and show and prove, um, but definitely it's going to work because it has the right number of shapes. They both have the same shapes, the shapes are the same size, and it tends to be, looks like it's going to fold in the right direction. All right, number four. Here are two three-dimensional figures. Tell whether each of the following statements describes figure A or B or both or neither. All right. This figure is a polyhedron. So polyhedron means 
It's a three-dimensional shape with edges made out of polygons. They both have that. That is true for both of them. This figure has triangular faces. I see a triangle. I see a triangle. That looks like both. There are more vertices than edges in this figure. Vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six vertices. Edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a no for that one. And vertices. One, two, three, four. Edges. One, two, three, four, five, six. So more vertices and edges. I don't see that at all. So that would be a neither. This figure has rectangular faces. Mm, I see that here in A, but not in B. So we'll say A. This figure is a pyramid. Hmm, that's a triangular pyramid. And that is an actual pyramid. We go with B. There is exactly one face that can be the base for this figure. Exactly one face that can be the base of the figure. Well, for this, that could be the base or that could be the base. So that's not going to work. And on this one, just because of how it's shaped, I could tilt it over and now that becomes the base. I could tilt it this way and that becomes the base. So that's going to be a neither one because anyone can be base. This might work if you had a, um, a, a square at the bottom, right? A square pyramid. Then you'd have exactly one base. But we don't have that. The basis figure is a triangle. Well, that's true for this one for sure. Okay. And this one is also a base, so that's true for that one as well. This figure has two identical and parallel faces that can be the base. Well, that's going to be A for these two triangles. Works right there. All right, and then our last one here. We have select all the units that can be used for surface area and explain why the others don't work. There are two more choices in the back side of my paper here. We also have square inches and F is square feet. So rather than flip it over, it's right in there. So, which ones work for surface area? Square meters? Yes. Area is always squared, so square meters will work just fine. Feet? Nope, that's just a unit of measurement. Not for surface area, not area, that's just how you measure it. Centimeters? Nope, it's just a unit for measuring. So length is great, but it's not the area. That's like two-dimensional, right? It's just, or uh, just a, a singular line. Cubic inches, mm, that's what we use for volume. When you talk about cubic stuff, that's volume. Square inches, yes. Square feet, yes. So we'd say A, E, and F. All right, and there's one more to go here. Let's flip the page. Find the area of this polygon and show your reasoning. So. Many ways you could do this. We can do some uh, decompose it and then put it back together. So I'm going to draw a line there to make a triangle. Draw a line there to make a triangle. Draw a line across there to make a triangle. So now I have three triangles and one rectangle. This triangle right here has one half times a base, one, two, three, and a height of two. So half of three times two becomes half of two is one becomes simply three. So we have an area of three right there, which means that's an area of three as well. The rectangle has a length of one, two, three, four, five, six times one, two, three. Six times three is 18. And then here we have a length of three with a height, I'm uh, sorry, a length of a base of six and a height of three. So we have half of six is three times three is nine. So this shape right here has an area of nine. So 9, 3, 3, and 18, we add those together. And we end up with 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So 30, 33 cubic, um, 33 um, square units is what we'd have for that one. All right, that's it for the day. Have a great one, and we'll see you next time.